nostalgia. I remember overheads. I was trying to put this together, and I'm trying to figure out how to make some things red. And I'm going crazy. And I'm thinking, if I just had an overhead transparency and a crayon, I could do this real fast. And of course, that's how I did it. And it's nostalgia. I miss that. Uh, I miss punch cards less, right? Uh, <laughs> change. Quality versus quantity. What do old guys do? They bemoan how things have changed. When I got my PhD, you know, Ryan Bott at Southern Methodist University said to me, the best thing you can do is do high quality research. Don't worry about how much, but that's the best thing you can do for SMU. And don't worry too much about anything else. Just do high quality research. He never talked about quantity. The world's changed. I'm not happy about it. That just means I'm an old guy, right? But it has changed. Take exactly the same points about universities Guess what? They become businesses in a way that I'm not very happy about. Another sign that I'm an old guy. Um, what hasn't changed? Management, math, and money. If you're in a business school, a management school, your salary's higher than if you're in a math department. I've always been in an engineering school, it's somewhere in between, but that relationship has just never changed, except the slope got steeper. <laughs> And less convex. <laughs> Some research team thoughts, not too much except number D. I'm just going to point out it's my little thing. If you're doing research, if you're giving a talk, if you would just spend the first page or two telling me exactly what the problem is, it'll make you a better researcher, it'll make you a better speaker. Uh, I'm an old guy whining again, but it really does help. And the trick is, when you define the problem, you cannot tell me you're using neural networks to solve it. I want to know what the problem is. And how you solve it, that's on later pages. This is difficult. Ask a student doing dissertation. Define your problem. They'll start telling you how they're doing linear programming, this or that, or you know, they're using common random numbers, and it's like, no, no. There's a problem buried here somewhere, and I don't want it confounded. Um, I've, I've had a life of being a jack of all trades, and in fact, this whole room does it. You got math and probability and statistics, and you all live on the boundary of some of those things. But then there's the boundary of economics, uh, uh, the boundary of computer science, and the real joy is that we all live on that boundary. Could work. We could be very, very creative. The disadvantage, of course, is it's kind of hard to be recognized in any one of those communities because you're kind of bouncing among those communities. That's a plus and minus. We're all kind of jack of all trades, and that's pretty well defined what I've been uh, doing. And then I'll just mention planning. I've never been able to plan. For those of you who have a five year research plan, very last, but yeah, yeah, he probably does. <laughs> right? But this is just something I've never been able to do. The wonderful thing is to be able to say, I have all sorts of ideas. I don't have enough time to work on all these ideas, and it's just always worked for me. But I do sometimes I meet people with a plan. Being a professor, it's great, but there's the three Fs. I have to look at and read them, flexibility, freedom, and fear. So you're given this job, you're told, go do something. You've got tremendous flexibility. You can do it in the middle of the night, which has been very valuable to me. <laughs> um, you don't have to show up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so you've got all sorts of freedom. You can work on whatever you want to work on. You just have to explain later that you did something, which creates incredible fear, right? It's a lot simpler to go through life if somebody will just say, do this and you are a success. And no, uh, it kind of the whole professor thing is pretty soft. Any job is a little bit like that, but the whole professor thing is by design that, and it's pretty cool. Um, um, I don't need the others. Um, some free advice. I quit a PhD program at the University of Iowa. Dropped out, went to work for EDS, Electronic Data Systems, Ross Perot's company. I got 20 months of real world experience. That's my entire real world experience. It made me appreciate that applications are really, really hard. And I couldn't quite imagine doing that for my whole life. And I didn't much want to do management. It made me kind of figure out what I wanted. I wanted to be a technical nerd and have an honorable career path. And being a professor kind of did it. But if I hadn't dropped out of that PhD program, I would have suddenly had a PhD and no 
plan, getting back to plans. Um, I'll just mention, if you don't go to lunch with other people, do it. They, you know, going to lunch with others is just incredibly valuable. As a graduate student, going to lunch with advisors, faculty members, other, just do it. Uh, not to network, but just to not always be doing technical stuff. Uh, you'll never, never feel ready. You won't feel ready to graduate. You won't be ready. You, you, we all have this feeling. Oh, I'm not ready. I better spend another year, write another chapter in my thesis. It's all defense mechanism we tend to have. Now, you're not ready, and just go charge into it, and it'll probably be okay. Uh, if you're a referee, anonymous, people don't know who you are, grab that opportunity. Because there's an associate editor, there's an editor who's reading what you write, and they are forming opinions. And you want to stand out, you want to become part of a community, here's this anonymous thing that's real easy to blow off and just say, I get no credit for this. You get no credit except what? No, people who are kind of networked and influential notice that you're competent. This is a huge opportunity. Do not take it lightly. Um, the, the why is yourself. Just be yourself. Take advantage of the fear and stuff from earlier. Do what you want. Because um, if you're not, and you're in this, in this room and you're kind of just working on something you don't want to work on, oops. Right, because most of us in here have the flexibility to do what you want to do. And finally, of course, is this. This is left over from 1991. Z had me stumped for how do you, you know, I had to have a letter Z. Standard normal. I, you know, <laughs> that doesn't give you a job. <laughs> I claim Barry Nelson said zucchini. I'm not sure Barry takes credit for this, but it was, don't be a vegetable. It could have been my tape. I, I don't know. Somebody suggested this. And it was pretty good. In the concept of interviewing for a job, it means ask questions, be active. And I think to finish this, you know what? Do something. Enjoy life. Don't be a vegetable. Get out there and just do what you want to do. Enjoy the opportunities you got, because everybody in this room as we're pretty lucky to have these opportunities. Thank you very, very much.